In this video, you're going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Fire Mage in Cataclastic. You're going to learn the best race, talents, glyphs, gear, professions, and of course, macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with Skillcat quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Let's kick things off at the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, as with most classes, human is going to be the best option if you're playing Alliance. Now, this is because of the double damage trinket. It's honestly just way too good to pass up. And this is because of Will to Survive, which allows you to break out of any crowd control on a two minute cooldown. Now, as a result, you can equip two damage trinkets instead of one. And this can easily help you land kills and give you access to more PVE damage trinkets. Now, your alternative pick for the Alliance is gonna be Gnome. Now, you won't see this recommended too often, but for Mage, the expansive mind racial that increases your mana pool can be extremely useful. Now, additionally, Mage survivability is tied to your ability to kite, so having an extra root break from Escape Artist can honestly go a long way. Now, for Horde, you really only have one option to choose from, and your best option is going to be Orc. The stun reduction provided by Orc is very powerful, and it can easily be the difference between winning and losing a game, Blood Fury is also a pretty nice bonus as this effectively serves as a mini trinket. While Horde is a solid option, most mages are going to find themselves on the Alliance playing human as this helps to optimize our gearing strategy. Talents work a little bit different in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything you need to know. There is only one build that you're going to be playing, but there will be some minor adjustments that you can make to it. One of the first things you're going to notice is that combustion now works just a little bit differently. Instead of providing a ramping critical strike effect, it now takes all of your dots and applies a new dot that deals massive damage. You're going to play around combustion windows to really build big burst pressure. Fire Mage also has access to a reliable stun through the form of impact. All of our damaging spells have a chance to make our next Fire Blast stun the target for two seconds. It'll also spread out dots, which helps deal spread pressure. This can be extremely useful for landing kills or denying kill attempts. Now, there is one minor variation you make in the talents. You can drop the two points in Molten Fury, which effectively serves as a passive execute for two points in Improved Flame Strike. This reduces the cast time of Flame Strike by 100% with two points and makes it so Blast Wave will cast Flame Strike if two or more targets are hit. This can be good when fighting stacked targets. Now, along with talents, the glyph systems changed a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're going to have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are pretty set in stone and you're not going to have any room for flexibility here as they're mandatory for our build and utility. Glyph of Living Bomb increases the damage of our Living Bomb, which we're going to be using quite often. Glyph of Pyroblast increases the critical strike chance of this spell, which can help us chain hot streak procs. Glyph of Mage Armor increases our mana regeneration by 20% when Mage Armor is active. This can help us avoid going out of mana. Your builds will have the same three major glyphs. Evocation, Frost Armor, and Polymorph. Glyph of Evocation will cause Evocation to also heal you over its duration. This can turn the ability into a defensive. Glyph of Frost Armor is going to make you regenerate 2% of your mana every 5 seconds, 
while Frost Armor is active. And finally, we have Glyph of Polymorph, which is going to cause the spell to remove all dots on the target. This will ensure that Polymorph doesn't break instantly. Finally, our Minor Glyphs are actually pretty useful. Glyph of Arcane Brilliance reduces the mana cost of Arcane Brilliance by 50%. This can be amazing into comps with a lot of purges. Glyph of Armors will increase the duration of any Mage Armor by 30 minutes, so you don't need to refresh it as often. Our final minor glyph is Glyph of Slow Fall, as this removes the Regent requirement. You're going to also be using Slow Fall to juke a Death Knight's Dark Simulacrum. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new Classic course. Alright, with all of our rotational damaging abilities covered, let's delve into our biggest offensive cooldown, and that is Combustion. Sporting a 2 minute CD, Combustion will often be our most consistent way of landing kills due to the overwhelming amount of damage it can provide, as it bundles all your fire dots into a mega dot without consuming them, effectively making your dots tick twice. And since you can spread all these dots to the entire enemy team through impact stun, you can force multiple targets low at the same time if they're nearby. So how do you create a good combust, you may wonder? Well, the answer is that you want to fish for the biggest ignite as possible, which you're going to often gain from shattering a pyroblast into a cone of cold or frost nova. So following this, you'll then have three damage over time effects on the target from the Pyroblast, the Ignite you just generated, and Living Bomb, which should be on the target anyway. And then we combust to melt our target and hopefully spread it with an impact stun. It's also very important to note here that combustion doesn't lose damage if your dot has less duration. So a living bomb that has one second remaining will still add the same damage to a combustion that a full duration one does. Now, as for when you want to set up combustion, you need to be aware that the dot is actually dispellable, so we want to be covering the enemy healer in a blanket silence to prevent them from reacting. And since Dragon's Breath doesn't break on dots, we can even use it on the target we combusted, which will sit its full duration. You can see Riva do this here, which puts the Enhanced Shaman in a Trinket or Die scenario. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. Alright, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over Stat Priority. You're going to want as much Intellect as possible. You'll naturally acquire this through your gear. After that, your highest priority is hitting the 4% cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss, because nothing's more frustrating than when you're about to win the game, and then your killing blow just totally misses the target. You'll then need 195 spell penetration. This is going to ensure that your spells don't miss. You'll then want to get at least 3000 resilience. You'll now have the option of going full crit or full haste. Now, we recommend full crit as this is the most consistent for Fire Mage given the importance of Hot Streak. Mastery does very little for Fire Mage, so you can skip this stat. Now, before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre biz gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. In season nine, all of your best in slot gear is going to come from PvP with the exception of your trinket, although this too is going to be swapped out for a PvP trinket. Your main pieces are going to be the Vicious Gladiator's Regalia set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Silk Cowl, Amis, Robe, Hand Guards, and Trousers. We're running 5 set just due to the set's stats being optimized for our breakpoints. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion for our spell penetration, your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Cuffs of Accuracy, Vicious Gladiator's Cord of Cruelty in the Waste Slot. Finally, to round out our off pieces, you'll have Vicious Gladiator's Treads of Cruelty in the Boot Slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Spell Blade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's End Game in your off hand. The Wand Slot is going to be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Touch of Defeat. For your jewelry, you're going to pick up the Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Alacrity. 
For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Dominance and Accuracy. This is where a majority of our hit is going to come from. Finally, for your trinkets, use the Vicious Gladiator's Medallion of Tenacity on the Horde. If you're Alliance, you're going to replace this with a Vicious Gladiator's Badge of Dominance. You'll then use the Bell of Enraging Resonance for more critical strike. If you find yourself struggling to survive, you can drop this for the Vicious Gladiator's Insignia of Dominance. When it comes to reforging, your goal is to reforge everything to crit or haste. Now, since we recommend going full crit, we're going to be reforging any leftover stats to crit. With your gear sorted, let's get everything gemmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House where you're going to be picking up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats is still going to be beneficial. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your bracers, Haste for your gloves, Lava Walker for your boots. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is going to be enchanted with Lightweave Embroidery. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Sapphire Spell Threat, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and Superior Intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your meta socket, you're going to be slotting in a Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond. This is going to provide you with some intellect and increase the amount of damage that your critical strikes deal. In your red slots, you have a couple of options. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more damage, or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you're just going to use Brilliant Inferno Rubies, as there are no blue gems worth taking for Fire Mage. And then in your yellow sockets, put Potent Ember Topaz for some Critical Strike and Intellect. Professions will matter once more in Cataclysm, and there's a few choices. You'll want to go jewel crafting and tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Your first default pick is tailoring for Lightweave Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spell power buff, which provides a sizable increase to our damage. This can be crucial for landing kills during important windows, or we can save our CC for this proc. Jewel crafting is our second pick. This allows us to use the Chimera's Eye Gems. We're going to use the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes for more damage, but you do have the option of using Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience if you're struggling to survive. You do have the option of going Blacksmithing as an alternative to Jewel Crafting. It is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it's going to be more stats in later seasons when we have access to Epic Gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you'll want Focus Macros for Fire Blast, Counter Spell, and Polymorph. These are your main forms of CC and control, so you'll want to be able to reliably and quickly shut down the healer during your damage windows. Remember, you only want to use Focus Fire Blast with an impact proc for the stun. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Polymorph, Fire Blast, and Counter Spell. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the keybind space. Now, you're going to want a macro to remove Curse for Party 1 and 2. This can be good for things such as Hex or Agony. You're also going to want a macro to cancel your Ice Block. You can't deal damage while Ice Blocked. Once your healers topped you off, then you can cancel this ability if it's safe to do so. Now it's time for our damage macro. We're going to simply want to pair Combustion with our Damage Trinket to maximize the amount of damage we deal during this window. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.